Hey, welcome to the podcast. My God. Um, okay, I won't say what the word is, but see what word you think Pang and I and Swanee loved that Jonathan said the most. It's just one word. I'll give you a little hint, a little treasure map. Look carefully in the Olympia Valance interview. Yeah. There you uh, go. I'm going to give you a clue. Yeah. Two words. King of Moomba. Yes. yes. The campaign has been officially <laughs> mounted. Uh, we had a really interesting uh, chat about sliding doors moments, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, specifically about times that you probably should have died but made a last-minute decision and avoided that. It was very, very interesting. As much as I love talking to you four, mm. you three, sorry, it's four of us in this yeah, three. I, yeah. I, you know, to have guests like Tom Gleisner, Olympia Valance and Thelma Plum, that's a pretty big, that big and interesting morning. Huge. For Enjoy the it. Podcast. Enjoy it. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Morning, Melbourne. Woof. It's rainy. It's rainy. We yeah. missed golf yesterday. Yeah, uh, we did. Dino and myself, we had a little date. Oh, man, it was lovely. It was an impromptu date. Yeah. Um, Dino was at working out. I had Jack's discus, which I'm about to talk about. So let's go for a little movie date. How wonderful. And Lido, the beautiful, it's flash as hell, Lido it's and Hawthorne. so gorgeous, it's great. isn't it? Did yeah. you go to Yochi afterwards? Yeah, we did, yeah. We yeah, shared we the same Yochi. same Yochi. Yeah, great. We shared spoons. Yeah. Uh, but we did get a little situation, Swanee, where well, there's only three of us in the, in the cinema. Yeah. Very, uh, us and Phil. Us and Phil. This old, old boy. This old boy, very intimate. And halfway through the movie, the movie just stops. Oh. Bang. Yeah. No, so we all look around and then I'll Phil. <laughs> we, we send, there's me and Dino in our prime athletically. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Phil's probably 75. <laughs> we send Phil to the office. Of course you did. <laughs> Get out there and fix it, Phil. Hey, Phil, look, uh, we've got a sore leg, man. And he was down the front, so we had to walk all the way up the stairs, yeah, the yeah. poor bastard. But, uh, Swanee, he... Uh, Phil really wanted those free movie tickets for The Inconvenience, which was fair. He did. But then the the, <laughs> the movie boy came in and said, look, we'll give you some free popcorn. <laughs> Phil wasn't happy with that. Phil wasn't wrapped. But Dino took him up in the offer. Dino straight down and got an extra large popcorn for me and Dino to share. That's, that is a, a fitting compensation. Mate. Yes. Hey, what's his blog called? So then he told, well, like, well, we had to wait about 10 to 15 minutes for the movie to restart. Yeah. And then Phil went into the, this conversation and told us all about his movie block. Flippant thoughts. Sorry. Flippant film thoughts by Phil. <laughs> oh, so he's a reviewer. He's a, oh, yeah, just for passion. He's a, he's a blogger. If you don't think I'm going to spend most of the afternoon reading Phil's reviews, oh, you'd yeah. be very wrong. Look at How good he's retired. He said now he just writes a blog. Cheers to that. Hey, Cheers get on you, Phil. Thelma Plum's coming in, an amazing musician. <laughs> Olympia Valance is coming in. Uh, there might be a special, a surprise guest. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Whatif.com is all about helping Aussies make the most out of every trip. Book a hotel, flight, surfboard and snorkel all before you can say brekkie buffet. Jump online or on the What If app and get started. What If is Aussie for travel. Uh, discus update. Uh-oh. Now, I know yesterday was a big day for my boy Jackie Brown, nine years old. Uh, he's a bit of a discus thrower, and he was in the uh, division championships. I get so confused, Swanee, because growing up in the country, it was just you got to try and win your town yes. or finish top two in the town. Then you go to the regionals. If you go in the top two in the regionals, you're off to the state championships at yeah. Olympic Park. Remember we used to have the running track there at Olympic yeah. Park before the tunnel? Well, now, when you're in the metro, Swanee, Jesus, there's a lot of levels you got to get through. Right. See, I, I wouldn't know that. I can't keep up with it. Apparently yesterday was the division for Burundara. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So anyway, so you get turn up. It's pouring rain. I ran out of, out of the studio this morning. I thought, this is a waste of time. Man, Carl's, how are we going? She goes, traffic's a nightmare. It's probably going to be running late. I go, okay, right. I'll make the effort. Get out to Doncaster. I'll roll in to see the discus. Yes. Got there just in time. Had the umbrella out. Ready to go. Jackie was pumped. He had his gear on and a beanie. It was an odd assortment, to be honest. <laughs> he had his athletic gear on and a beanie. Um, well, discus is one of the few sports where you can rock a beanie. You can rock That's anything a good point. you want. It's not yeah. really an endurance sport, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. It's all about technique and power. Pizzazz. Pizzazz. And pizzazz. So, and remember, the night before, Jack asked me whether uh, I had a discus uh, <laughs> for him to do some practice, because this kid doesn't practice. You know, he's just relying on his natural abilities. So, to Jack, no, I don't have a spare discus lying around in the backyard. So, you're just going to have to turn up, mate, and bang. So, the first throw he's having... He's in the competition, Swanee. 
So he's all ready to go. I can't believe that Jack is trying his hand at discus now. Oh, yeah. Huge. It was so cute. He had one of Mum's ribbons on his on his wrist because yeah. he's lefty, Swanee. Yeah. So he had a tie on his wrist for a bit of good luck. I Bless. said to him, hey, Nana Mary will look after you. Yeah. She'll, she'll put a couple, she'll tack a couple of extra metres on the end yes. of that. Oh. So anyway, he loads up. He's in that, you know, in that circle. Because in the discus, you, you sort of, I don't, I'm not sure they spin around, but he didn't spin around. And then you can't, you've got to step out of the back of the ring. So I said, mate, make sure you don't step on the front of the circle. Yeah. Okay, and otherwise it's out. a foul. Yeah. And you've got to throw it in the V. Throw mm. it in the V. So anyway, first throw, bang, out she goes. Good height, great length, straight out in the, straight down the hay did a little. <laughs> 19.12 metres. Bang. I thought, shit, this is going to be hard to beat. Gonna be hard to beat. I thought the kids, the kids in pole position. Mm. And anyway, apparently there's this uh, this other kid that all the other kids were talking about. Oh yeah, there's the always guy, one. There's always one. And this kid, he's a big boy. He's tall. I thought, Jesus, he's gonna destroy Jack's time, mm. uh, Jack's distance. So because Jack comes over, he goes, Dad. I think we're going to struggle. This kid does 25 metres. I go, who told you that? And he goes, all his mates did. I said, mate, they're just bullshitting you. They're trying to scare you. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to mate. Wh- said, whispers around the playground that Brutus can do 25 metres. Mate, so funny. It, it was abso- It was such a... Bill- and then it just dawned upon him then, you know, the human psychology. Oh, he goes, oh, is that what, is that what yeah, can happen? they're psyching you out, said, Jack. they're psyching you out, mate. Don't worry about it. Yes. Don't worry about it. So anyway, this kid turns up, mate. I reckon his first throw, it looked like it went about 35 metres, but he's thrown it outside the V. Ha! Ah. So all the other kids are sit, sitting around, the, the, the discus goes out, he misses the V, you hear the uh, marshal go, foul! Oh. No throw! Jack's in it! Ooh, Jack's in it next, still. Next minute you hear Jack go, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Poker face, John. (laughs) (laughs) This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. And now it's time for Whose Plotline Is It Anyway? Nick from Bandura, you are our uh, our player. Good morning, Nicholas. Well, people are going to guess, to be honest, Swanee, when I go through my life story. You know what I mean? Yes, you're you're our first guesser, though, and I feel like you've got this, Nick. Morning, guys. How are you? Nicholas! <laughs> I've, I've had quite a life, brother, and if you can uh, tell me what this what movie this sounds like, you're going to two movies. You're going to go see The Woman King and Don't Worry, Darling. Uh, and if you ask Flippant Phil yesterday, Brownie, Don't Worry, Darlings. Yeah, it could be better. It really? Be doesn't matter. Here okay. we go. Wait. Sometimes I like to catch the bus, gang. Uh, who doesn't, huh? Mm, your bus I road. don't. I don't like the bus. Out of all the modes of public transport, that's my least yeah, I must favorite. admit, I haven't done a lot of bus time apart mm. from the school bus growing up. A lot of variables on the bus. You can get, uh, you know, traffic. You're at the mercy of the traffic. Mm. Or you're at the mercy of, like, you know, terrorists or, or criminals. Really? What? Mate, I was so annoyed. I was in Los Angeles. I get on the bus and I see the bus drivers wigging out. I'm like, I walk up the front and yeah. go, uh, what's going on, mate? And he goes, I don't know. A couple this, of unruly passengers. This cop's just jumped on and he's acting all crazy. Handsome cop, though. Yeah. So I go to the cop. What's going on? Everyone's a bit nervous about this bus. Mm-hmm. And I swear to God, he looks at me and goes, there's engine trouble. Hmm. And I go, we're going so fast. It's an old bus. And he, how can we have engine trouble? Trouble. And he goes, mate, you would not believe if this bus <laughs> slows down any any slower, we're going to blow up. Really? Look, that's a real design flaw. What a holiday. That is a design flaw. <laughs> what kind of idiot designs this bus? Jeez. Hey, Nicholas, you got any idea, brother? Yeah, speed with Sol Keanu. Yeah, of course it's speed yes, with Sol Keanu. Yes, it is, Nick. <laughs> hey, and a young Sandy Bullock. That was one of her breakout roles. Oh, that was gorgeous. <laughs> oh, Sandy. Nick, now, oh, yeah. we, ask people, uh, we ask people this question a lot. Speed or Point Break, what's the superior film? Oh, that'd be point break for sure. Correct me again, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you got a double pass of The Woman King starring Viola Davis. Uh, it's in cinemas October 27. You're going to go see Don't Worry Darling as well with Harold Styles. Uh, that's in cinemas now. Plus, we'll give you a copy of Jonathan's book, Life 
in football. It's a ripper. Go on, Nikki. Go well, sir. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Good morning, Melvin. Hope you're good. It's Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Uh, we're having that spicy chat yesterday. Yes, we were. We were having a chat about uh, sliding doors moments. Uh, and because it is the 20th anniversary of the terrible Bali bombing. Yeah, shocking. Yesterday it was. Yeah, mm. and you, Brownie, in all likelihood, should have been at the Sari Club on that night. Have a listen. It's the 20-year anniversary of the Bali bombings. We were actually booked and scheduled to go to our Bali, and Nigel Lappin called his wedding and invited about you know, probably 10 or 12 of us boys that would have been probably in the uh, Sari Club that night, sitting there, we had to change our flight, Swanee, and go to Nigel's wedding in Lawn instead. Wow. A great team, mate, and may have saved some lives, Swanee, on that decision alone when he married the beautiful Claire. I love a sliding doors mm. moment. Yeah, that's fair yeah. income. And the reason I say Sari Club is because two years earlier we had the footy trip. Bali was an easy go-to. Yes. For footy teams and every a lot of Aussie Swannies. Of it course. still is. Love but it. But you would go and sit in the Sari Club. So, so you've been to the Sari Club? Been to the Sari Club, absolutely, wow. two years early, and we're there every night. It was fun as heck. And um, so that's why I say, Swanee, the sliding doors moment. Absolutely, you could have been there. 13, 24, 10, have you had a sliding doors moment? Of course, that's named after the amazing Gwyneth Paltrow film. Mm, what a film. Um, where one small decision changes the trajectory of your life forever. And that was a damn literal sliding door in the film? It yeah, was, on yeah. The train. Brilliant. On the train. Brilliant. We're talking sliding doors moments, and I've remembered I've got one. So when I was sort of 16, uh, I was on a holiday with my dad and his then girlfriend. They ended up getting married, mm. but um, then girlfriend in Queensland, and they were driving back to Adelaide. And for some reason, I said, so we were in Queensland, I lived in Melbourne, they lived in Adelaide. They said, we're going to drive via Melbourne and drop you home and then blah, blah, blah. And I went, you know what, I'm going to fly. Is yeah. that okay? Mm-hmm. And it was back when flying was a big deal and very expensive. You know, we're talking ANSET times. and uh, Vale. Va- vale, ANSET and TAA. And my dad bought me a plane ticket and I went home. They drove and um, just outside of Hay in uh, New South Wales, I believe Mm, that is. Yes. Uh, She rolled the car and I would have been in the back seat and wouldn't have made it. Wild. Yeah, so I should have been in the car. It would have shaken you up, Swanee. Swanee. It was really odd. Two quick ones. really odd situation, yeah. Seth MacFarlane from Family Guy, 9-11. The actual flight he missed because he was hungover. Gets on that flight. He's he's going into a damn building, man. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Other one, I was in the country following a Tarago. It got T-bone, not us. And it was uh, Grinspoon, the band Grinspoon. Really? Wow. They get out of the Tarago and Phil from Grinspoon starts like vomiting from the shock. Oh it was wild, God. man. Fair dinkum. Where was that at? Uh, Country WA. I don't remember oh, where. So, and then, so you missed that by Not two seconds. Mate, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Kieran from Bayswater, what is your sliding doors moment? Well, Chrissy, you just stole my thunder, mate. What do you mean? I was uh, I was in New South Wales. My best friend just got his license, and uh, my father and mother had split, and he was remarrying in uh, Victoria. And um, I decided to jump on the plane, come down for the wedding. And at the reception, I get a phone call from my mate's mum, who just rolled his car down the Kangaroo Valley Mountain. And we were joined at the hip. If I was in New South Wales, I would have been in the passenger seat. Wow, Kieran. Man, it's a it's weird feeling, isn't it, when you you know narrowly avoid catastrophe? It was it was a shock. Like uh, I was getting phone calls from everyone because they knew my mate Ridge had gone off, and they're like, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" Did, and I'm like, "I'm in a different state." Did that change you, the way you looked at your life that that uh, moment? Not, not. I was still quite young, so right. I was about seventeen. My mate was nineteen. Mm. He had just gotten his peas, so I sort of didn't really think too much like that back then. Um, but uh, looking back on it, it's wow. definitely, yeah, definitely something I think about. Incredible. Karen, yes or no? Do you have kids? I do, mate. I have two kids. You got a family past the gun buyer world, my friend. I love this. Oh, you ripper, guys. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Splash into spring uh, at gun buyer world with unlimited water, wildlife, and rides. How good. Laura from Cheltenham. What is your story? Hello. I um, used to walk from my building on Latrobe Street a certain route to the Weight Watchers um, place on Burke Street. Mm. And... I would have been walking on the day of the Burke Street Massacre the exact 
route where the car travelled and <sighs> past the Galleria Shopping Centre and up, and it finished up at the shop just next to the Weight Watchers Centre. Wow, so I Laura. would have been there, but I had tonsillitis, so I took the day off and stayed home from work. Really? So at that exact yeah. time that that madman that was time. running people yeah. down. Oh, yeah. My lunch break, and I would have. I always went down on a, on that morning to weigh in, and just followed that same route, and would have been past Galleria, and then just finished up on Boat Street. And I saw it on the news and thought, should I have been standing there? Oh, how did you feel out in the days after it, Laura? Were you in shock? Did you feel lucky? I, I felt terrible. I felt like I should have been there as well. Maybe I could have helped people but also I thought I always wonder are you sent here to to learn or are you sent here to teach right like why does that not happen to you is there something you need to learn in your life or are you here to help and teach others hey you're off to uh, the woman king starring the great Viola Davis she's amazing Uh, it's in cinemas October 27 fascinating isn't it of course the most famous uh, sliding door when uh, Richie Valens the big bopper and Buddy Holly uh, on the plane crash, and Waylon Jen- Jennings, the country music singer, gave up his seat yes. on that plane, and then they, they crashed. I remember Lee Matthews was sitting there one day, yeah. and then he left, and then I told Brownie and Pang the question I was going to ask him, oh. <laughs> and they looked at me like, oh. you're that, a freaking idiot. That wouldn't have gone down well. <laughs> can you tell me next? Uh, I'll tell you off air, yes. and then Jonathan can decide if I bring it to the air. I would have lost my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> The podcast. Hello, and look what the uh, the weather's dragged in. Our uh, our own sunshine, Sam Payne. Good morning, Melbourne. The rising sunshine. sun. Well, what's Thank that you. song? Sunshine on a rainy day. Mm, sunshine on a rainy, rainy day. day makes my soul, oh, makes my soul, soul drift. Just sing along, Sam. I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that song. Is no. it Christine Anu? You never heard of the great Christine Anu? I've heard of Christine Anu. Come on, mate. Mate, you would have done podium time to that for sure. For yeah. sure. Let's find it. Let's well, find, find that it, song. And I'll tell you if I ever. I, I was no. partial to a podium. I'm not lying. You know, back in the younger days, if at, at a club and there was a podium there, I fell off one once. You yeah. were you I were did like some damage too. Did you? Not, oh yeah. Hurt my knee. You were like it's always a, good when a, you go to the dance floor and you come off and you're in, there's blood coming out of you. <laughs> ah, did you spill your drink as you fell? I kept the drink, Dean. Yeah. An oh. early story that you told really made me laugh. You on the dance floor <laughs> and you would ask someone to dance with you. And uh, then the next please. thing yeah. she would see was you warming up, like, you know, stretching your hamstrings. Come on. Yeah. That, that, that's that a is classic. classic. Very good physical that's comedy by you, Sam. Very good. This One is, of the great physical t- comics. This is back in the, uh, back in the 20, late 20s. When yeah, would you like to dance? Yes, and as you walk out, I stop. Mm. They look, they get onto the dance, but they look back. Where is he? I'm there doing. Stretching. I'm stretching my quads. Yeah, yeah. The, dri- Hamstring uh, the stretch. drivers, mate. The drivers, so funny. Oh, yeah. You had a lot of spare time back yeah, in those days. It, it didn't work, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast, and I feel as though I've got to know y- you all, my team, uh, over the over the journey, as we Brownie sure would have. say. And so oh. it spawned this segment. Previously on if I know Brownie well enough, you'll be able to tell me who Shelly Marcone is. Shelly Marcone is the owner of the LA Stallions in the last boys of death. Tango and Cash. You'll be able to tell me his character's first name. Sylvester Stallone's character's name is Ray Tango. <laughs> Russell's character, his name is Gabrielle Cash. I said, I feel as though I've got by osmosis, Christine. You've got to know there. You've got. To, I've got to know you all. There's off air. There's on air. There's social gatherings. I get to know people. I get to know. Them. It's a seriousness in his answer delivery. Yes, the Shelley Marcone one is unbelievable because it's a wonderful name, but it's like, well, that, where's that from? I and also I had never heard it, so the stakes are high. This mm. is not. Oh, yeah. You haven't said to Brownie off air. By the way, I'm going to ask you who Shelley nah. Marcone. Here's your chance to Google. This is. Truly, if you know Brownie, you think he might know this, and he's never let you down. No. Guess what? You're all, you're all. Uh, I'm testing you all today. Or oh. I'm testing myself how well I know you all. But I'll start with you, Brownie. Though is that all right? So if I know you, Brownie, the 1997 action thriller Con Air will be a seminal movie in your life. Mm. If I name, I'm going to name some of the actors, and you have to give me their character's name from the action thriller Ooh. Con Air. Now, he looks nervous. That's all right. Hey. We'll find out if I know you that well. So, the main character, of course, the main actor is Nicolas Cage. Mm. What's his 
character's name in Con Air. Uh, Nicholas Cage is. Um, oh, she's a nah, uh, no, uh, not, Chris, not Christian. Cameron. Doesn't Cameron. Matter. Cameron. Cameron Poe. Okay, yes, he's back. Gonga, you're back. Come on. He's back. All right, John Malkovich. So <laughs> John Malkovich is Osiris the virus. Yes. <laughs> Steve Buscemi. See, it's easy. What a cast. Garland Green. That's easy. That's uh, easy. Uh, yeah, all right, okay, all right. Uh, no, but I mean, now, now, now you'll start to stretch me. Yeah, you'll start to stretch me. Oh, well, I might as well just test you. Um, John Cusack's in that movie as well, playing U.S. Marshal. <sighs> if he gets this, I, I may just punch the air. <laughs> U.S. N- Marshal. It's not John. Vin. Vin- uh, nah. Nah. Got U.S. Me. Marshal Vince Larkin. Vince Larkin. Yeah. Still Jeez, good, though, mate. Is. Still good. That's all right. So good. No, not bad. All right. Swanee, you are up. Oh, my God. I was talking to Dino about this earlier, uh, uh, during the week, that, of course... The Hitch, his papa, he is probably the he's the Channel Nine news reader that you identify uh, closest with this city as the father of Melbourne. Yeah, well, you know, before him, mm. uh, uh, Hitch was just an understudy to the great Brian Naylor. Mm. Brian Naylor was the mm. Channel Nine news reader for so long. When he would take a break, Hitch would come in. Right now, when Brian Naylor retired, Hitch got the job, and yeah. you know, it's, it's continuity and there's longevity there in those newsreaders. Swanee, mm. you would. Well, we're the same age. You grew up with Brian Naylor. I sure did. He was our newsreader. Mm. Brian Naylor and Channel Channel 9 had a jingle for mm. Brian Naylor. And if I know you, Chrissy Swan, you'll be able to sing or tell me or recite the jingle that Channel 9 had for their 6pm newsreader, Brian Naylor. Dino, do you think I know this? I reckon you know this. Brian told me, <laughs> Brian told me, Brian told me so. I know everything I need to know because Brian told me so. Here's the evidence. Well, you know all that. Brian told me, Brian told me, Brian told me so. So really, you get into it. So I know everything I need to know because Brian told me so. Brian told me so. Brian told me so. Brian told me so. It's unbelievable. Had, he had his own jingle. What a jingle that was. Hitch needs a jingle, Dino. Hey, on sort, it. On it. Sort it. I will. I mean, look, Hitch told me. Yeah, well, that's it, right. It would work. I think I'm more like a hip-hop flavour for Hitch. Oh, okay. Hey, a couple more. All right, I'll start with you, you, you beautiful West Coast Eagles man. Nervous. Into, you should well, be. Yeah, well, yeah, no. well, I reckon maybe you ask him to recite the theme song. That'll be a <laughs> challenge after the last 12 in, months. Thanks, two, John. In 2005, your team defeated the Sydney Swans in a grand final. I would, I'm, I'm trying to do your age and thinking it's quite a... That, that'd be the one where you go, that's the one where you watched. You would have watched the replay. You weren't there, were you? 05 or 06, did you say, just to be clear, 05? Did you just oh, say? Oh, 06, sorry. 06, yeah, they won it. 05, 05, Sydney. Five, sorry. sorry. 06, yeah. I came here on a bus to see it. All right, so you were there. Oh, really? Oh, All right. Such a so sweet boy. I've got the I've got the uh, team in front of me. Mm. If I know you, Dino, yeah, 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 you'll be able to name. I want twelve. Oh no. God! I was going to say five. <laughs> no, no. But, five. You could name five. But Swanee, oh, a lot of colourful characters. Accessing this, memory. This team was famous for many, their off-field Jan- activities. Chris Judd. All right, bang. Chad Fletcher. Daniel Kerr. Yes. Cousins. Hey, I'm Cuzzy. Yeah. Quentin Lynch. Hold on a sec, Quentin Lynch, yeah. I'm writing them, Sammy. You don't okay. need to worry. How many has he got? Just enjoy it. I know I'm off, He's got I, five. I know yeah. off the top of my head, pretty much. Oh, my God. Tyson Stangline. Yes. Yeah. Six. <laughs> I'm, I'm, how am I only up to six? Um, what about a brother of yours? There's a lot of Think of the stars, mate. That golden yeah, era. the stars. Most, think- most of them are in prison now. Mate, but the, the golden era had just finished. So I'm panicking now. Think back to I'll give you, you the coach. Oh, whoosh. Okay, there you go, seven. Oh, shit. You're, okay, just, just you're not a real supporter. No, don't say that. <laughs> don't you say that. Okay. I'm willing to wait. Oh, the greatest ruckman of all time. Of our Dean era. Cox. Thank you. Oh, you. Keep feeding me just half clues. How many are we up to eight? Yeah. Bit, yeah. No, the, the Norm Smith medal. Darren Glass. Yes. The Norm Smith That's medal nine. that day. Norm Smith was the great. Andrew Embley. Yes, ten. You only need two more, mate. So impressive. Only two more. Was there a little guy? Was there a small guy? Big red red nut goal kicker. (laughs) (laughs) Our coach is with Vossi. Oh, and he's my friend. (laughs) You know, you might be that close. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm going to bow out 10, but I'm panicking. That's why. David, we're a punder. Where are you? Shit. Oh, my God. That's a big miss from you. A huge There's miss. There's Adam Michael, Selwood. Michael, oh, my God. Michael Braun. Michael Braun, Braun, Drew Brandt. Anyway, okay. Ashley Hansen. Hey, Last ten, one. 10 out of 10 yeah, It's not right. bad, mate. I know. 12 was asking. I'm going to go to I'm gonna go to Jack, the other member that I think I know well. All right. Yo. Oh good morning. Yo. There he is. Hey. Uh, oh, I'm nervous. <laughs> the two things. You've mentioned this. We have This has uh, come up a few times. Yeah. That in 2003, the, what, what if your movies... Full if throttle. If Charlie's Angels full <laughs> throttle, right? Is, what Great if your, film. Great it's, film. That's your equivalent of the Rocky movies for us, is it? Yeah. Charlie's Angels full throttle. <laughs> Still holds up. It's a great... No, it is. I, I was watching... Yeah. Sunday Scary's yeah. job. Yeah. All right. So if I know you, Jack Charles, and your love of the 2003 hit, Charlie's Angels full throttle, you'll be able to tell me the names of uh, Cameron Diaz... Drew Barrymore and Lucy Liu's characters. Oh, uh, Drew Barrymore's Dylan Saunders. Yes. Uh, Lucy Liu's Alex. Yes, that's good enough. And Cameron Diaz is Natalie Cook. Oh, yes! Oh, that's oh, big, Jack! Yes. Wow. Big, keep going. All right. Oh, you can Justin keep... Theroux, Seamus O'Grady, yes. Crispin Glover. Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Creepy Thin Man. All right, hold on. Demi Moore was the villain. What? what, what oh, Madison you... Lee. That was oh, great. Oh, Madison oh. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so what funny. A child. Well done. <laughs> Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Kind of a surprise, this guy. Catch him Monday. H Y B B A. Hey, We love it when you come in, Tom. And I just want to remind everybody that Tom Gleisner, this legend of Australian television, was the very first guest on this show when we started a thousand years ago. Thank you very much. A, an honour, a thrill. So much to clean up, so much to pack. Um, uh, first of all, I've got to say, you, Chrissy, the Brian Told Me song you were singing earlier, yes. do you know, it was not written for Brian Naylor. Who was it written for? Brian Henderson in Sydney. And they just happened, Channel 9 just happened to have two newsreaders called Brian, so they got to recycle the jingle. There you go. That's, that's, that's amazing. amazing. So it was first played to Brian Henderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say, oh, no, I don't like that. Well, this is not complicated, Brownie. I'm saying that it's... <laughs> It was written for Brian Henderson in, in Sydney, Sydney, and oh, then right. they put then. But I thought, yeah, there's a chance listening to the jingle going, eh, I'm not that happy with that. Oh, yeah, wow. that's a, I thought that was a pretty good jingle yeah. for a newsreader, by the way. Yeah, the yeah, newsreader's got his own jingle. Yeah. And then, but you reckon, reckon the, bright, the Sydney, the Sydney, the the, the, the heavyweights up in Sydney oh. thought, how it's good. It's a bit of. It's, it's it's good that we've got two newsreaders in our main cities that are both called Brian. We yes. can yeah, halve yeah. the cost with the jingles. What and, are the odds? That's a. I Brian Henderson not been, in grub with, obviously. they may have been a bit earnest, though, the newsreaders, to want to have a jingle. Yes. Like, it seems odd that they would have a jingle. Well, Hitch is in anyway. his own. Anyway, we're off track. Yeah, Tom. I've taken us totally off come topic. On, I'm Tom. sorry. I'm here to talk about, would you like to come to lunch with me? Yes, obviously. No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Correct answer. Bold. Okay, but... Where are right. we going, Tom? Where are we going? <laughs> Entrecot? We're going to have get, well, a, get into it? Fisticuffs? Uh, which, which food court are you taking <laughs> about to, Tom? Before we go, how dare you? Before we go to venue, let me talk, let me talk guests at this lunch. Me and <laughs> the... Still not that appetising. Okay, no, okay, it's more. The extraordinary Kitty Flanagan. Oh, they're, wow. They're call, thank you. They're calling it In Conversation. Ah. Oh. Tom Guy's the Kitty Flanagan in common. You've done a few events with Kitty, haven't yeah. you, Sam? Over Absolutely. The she, you're not going to struggle at all. You, you two on stage together having a chat, and then I'm sure there'll be some Q&A at the end. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it'll be a wonderful 12, 13 minutes, or what are you <laughs> planning on doing? I'm going for eight. But um, no, it's lunch. <laughs> it's lunch. So that's, that's you know, it's well over an hour. Uh, and it's to raise money for a charity that I'm patron of, the Learning for Life Autism Centre. Yeah. So if you want to come along, it's tomorrow week, Friday uh, the 21st. Yes. October. It's at lunchtime. Now, when you hear lunch, Chrissy, a lot of guys think, well, that sounds like a that sounds like a ladies' event. Uh, mm. Is that what they, they think? Very gendered when you do lunches, oh. dinners are. It's always assumed it's kind of across the board. But right. we want to see everyone there. Kitty and I are going to be uh, regaling you with uh, stories, scurrilous tales. Fantastic! Mm. All phones will be turned. Can I? If I ask everyone to no recording, can mm. I trust an audience? You're not yes. Chris Rock, mate. It's all right. You don't. Everyone's, <laughs> okay. everyone's not going to video. Hey, yeah. where is it? Like, it it's it's over in Q. I'll I'll. Uh-huh. Uh, the details are all on the website. So what um, is the website? Learning for just go Google Learning for Life. Um, learning for, for life. life. That yeah. sounds like a gorgeous event of Friday week. Well, the most important question I have for you, Tom, <laughs> will yourself or Kitty Flanagan be driving away from the event envelopeless? 
Is it a cashy, Tom? Are you, <laughs> is, it, is it a cashy? As a patron of your own charity, are you slinging yourself an envelope? I, I, do we, uh, Kitty in particular is doing this so generously. You know, she's a very busy lady. <laughs> and, and, um, that out. And, uh, which I've dodged my own answer. There. Now, obviously, there's costs. Um, you know, there's, there's a driver. You've got to get a, a driver. My driver. It needs security. A box bar backstage. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what is petty cash for? Exactly. It's not for you. I believe there's a Latin term, Chris. It's called per diems. Yes. <laughs> and uh, no, no, all money, all money will go to, to Learning yeah. for Life helping us. Which is a out. wonderful charity. And if you know, you've mm. got me to do some stuff over the years. Which it is don't sound like, like that. No, really? <laughs> so, yeah, they're favours, by the way. I don't know if you know. <laughs> Under sufferance. Talk about cash. He does that. Um, <laughs> Google Learning for Life yes. and go and have lunch yes. with the great Tom Gleisner and Kitty Flanagan. You said that you're in conversation. Who's doing the questions and who's doing the answers? It's going to be a two way Christmas. Right. So we, we say in conversation. It's more like a cage wrestling match. But anyway, ah. we will be there on stage. We'll answer questions. Anything you want to know about, yeah. obviously. Have you been? Can't wait. Um, Fisk, I think there's another series of Fisk about to, yes. Fantastic. About to appear. Um, we'll, we'll go right back into the back catalogue. Speaking of questions, Swanee, are yeah. you going to do type five? Are you going to do a type five? Do a I am going to do a type five, but I just want to... I saw you at the upfronts in, in mm. uh, Sydney where Channel 10 showcases the new shows that are that, that are coming and the old shows that are getting renewed. Have you been paying attention, of course, yes. is uh, coming back. How many years is that? Well, this will be our 11th season next year, Chris. Big! Yeah. Mm. Yes. It was the upfronts. They were, they were, they were, you, you did a fabulous job hosting with Abby. But, you know, I just one word to 10. I think when the term sizzle reel, it can't go more than 11 minutes. I, <laughs> I just I don't think it's a sizzle reel. That is a fair <laughs> summation. Yeah. By the way, Brandy. Brandy. My yeah. old coach, Lee Matthews, used to say, seven years is about right in yeah. terms of a term. Mm. He said, ten years, now it's far too much. Mm. So it's time to roll it up. And you go mm. into 11th year. So you're bucking the trend of the great Lee Matthews, what he says. You've just told me to retire, Brownie. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what you did. Yeah, yeah you I did. Put yeah. the show on ice mm. and... Um, mm. By the yeah. way, Tommy, oh, I consider those thoughts. Yeah, I'll, take it, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Type five, because I want to hear it. But you, you, know, you know Tommy fell asleep, don't you? How dare you? Yes. How dare you? Actually, you know, I've seen, I've seen video of it. I've seen a photo of it. <laughs> I may have nodded off briefly during the <laughs> third quarter presentation. It was... Uh, yes. Tommy, you put, a, you, put the eye, you put the eye patch on. You had the eye mask on. I think the that... aromatherapy. Look, it was, a, <laughs> it was a long day. Tight five. Tight five is a segment where I pull questions out of the hat and we get to know you Still better. Sure. Tommy G. You're very mysterious, Tom. You are. Sam wasn't your original choice for Have You Been Paying Attention. Who was? Jeffrey Rush. <laughs> <laughs> I see him most weeks. Oh, he's a cowboy boy, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He is indeed. <laughs> if you had to fight one of these people, who would it be? James Bond, Jason Bourne or Judy Dench? I would go for the, the weaker, more feminine of them, James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> when did you last clean your gutters? Very important today. Christine, yesterday I was I defied my wife's exhortations to not get on the ladder uh, because they talk about and the rain. Then. I, don't I know, did we, them last week. Yeah, how good of it? It's oh, a good it's feeling, isn't it? It's a great feeling to be up there high. I don't know. Have we gone a bit hard with this rain thing? You guys have got sandbags at reception. I think that might be. <laughs> I'm not sure if Sam Pipe, his vest is really needed, but, you know, it's going to rain. I've done the game. Sorry, Chris. Back to I'm, I'm wearing a snorkel. <laughs> What's your go-to washing detergent? Ah, uh, we, we're a. Uh, it's always got to be lemon fresh, and of course we're very environmental, so it has to have a pic- picture of a rainbow. Tom, on. that's a woman's job. You know that. No, no, what did you just say? You cannot it's say not. that. Not. But just remember that it's always got to have a lemon. <laughs> lemon. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's got to be lemon fresh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are lemon you fresh? the same with um, detergent for the? You know, washing up. Uh, no, we use like morning fresh lemon. Yeah, go go, go with the morning fresh. Yeah. Or, and we've got a lot of hand sanitizer. We're working our way through from yeah, last sure. year. And what sure. about soap wise for your body, Tom? Soap wise, um, I used to be a soap on a rope man. Yes. <laughs> you. Well, and what are you now? Are you a soap or a body gel? It's just rope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to replace it. It works. It does the job. It's All right. Are yeah. you familiar with the rules of shoot, marry, kill? Uh, not uh, not entirely. I'm going to give you three oh, names yes. of people you've got to shoot oh, one, yes. marry one, or kill sure. one. I don't know the difference between shoot and kill, but yeah. anyway. <laughs> Santo Chilaro. Oh, well, marry? We've been married as, you know, colleagues. Well, don't go decade. too soon, because the other two. <laughs> Jane Kennedy. <laughs> I, well, I guess same answer applies. You'd marry her as well. well and Rob Sitch, uh, are we marrying Rob? We are in a four-way. Yes. We've been yes. together for that long. There is no violence with any of us. That is true. Ever. You're already married. As usual, Tom. A thrill to see you. Get on to have lunch with uh, the gorgeous Kitty Flanagan and Tom. What an iconic duo. Google Learning for Life. It's on InQ Friday week. week.
Any more plugs for a river somewhere or anything like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm out. Thank you for your uh, time, your airtime, and I'll let Sam get back to whatever anecdotes he's dragging. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 100. Uh, 25K could be yours with our missing word after Ashes News at 7. it has been a culinary catastrophe at my house last night, guys. Yeah, it, play those violins because I don't know what I'm going to do. It's the worst outcome. For anyone who cooks all the meals. Undercooked chicken. No. So Monday night. Surprisingly, chicken doesn't need to be cooked for as long as you think it does. It's true. Is that, mm. It doesn't sound right. Is that right to no. jocks on Frillo over there? <laughs> Thank you very much, Swatty, back me up. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, who, who doesn't, uh, the, who doesn't the, love their chicken? <laughs> Medium rare, a little pink inside, no, no. you idiot. It's a bit bloody. No, no, you gotta, just got to be careful around the bones. Oh. That's where you got to be careful. There you go. Anyway, we digress <laughs> as per usual. I'll take you through the menu so far at my place this week. Mm-hmm. Monday was lamb and two salads. Tuesday was fish tacos with my homemade chipotle. But just check your Uber Eats orders. Yep. Nice. <laughs> no, no, I make all this. Oh, okay, so. And uh, Wednesday night was a uh, Mex bimbap, I call it. It's like quinoa, Mexican chicken. Fresh guacamole, black beans, barbecued uh, corn, and fresh spinach. It's Mex Bimbap. Mex Bimbap. Like a Bibimbap, but Mexican. (laughs) And obviously, with the the effort and and whatever that it takes, I was obviously home those nights Mm. at dinner time. Yesterday, uh, last night, I was at Would I Lie to You? A table read because it's coming back. And so I was home very late. So in the morning, I pulled out Australia's national dish, spaghetti bolognese. And I let it defrost on the counter because I knew that I wouldn't be home until 5.30. Too late for an, for an elaborate dinner. Mm. But you know the effort that I put in, in you know, retrospectively when I made the spaghetti sauce. They're, they're, there's a lot of thought and Absolutely. passion and love in it. Well, I cooked it all up and served it. No takers. What do you mean? As in, it was they taste? Did they taste it? No, they looked at it and went, "Oh no, I'm, I'm, no. I don't eat spaghetti bolognese anymore." Jeez, that Set the bar too All high. three of them. The food snobs, your kids. Mate, what have I done? I can't imagine that at all. No, no there's not a there's not a spe- bowl of spaghetti with bolognese sauce on it that Absolutely. I've never looked at and not wanted to eat. I agree. I agree. And I get really beautiful pasta and I cooked it yeah, properly. Yeah. And I had, you know, this um, parmesan on the microplane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was garlic bread. There was garlic bread. She's I'm concerned now because you just send, sent 16 units of your spaghetti bolognese down to me, old man. That's the first thing I thought of. 16. Yes, yeah, 16. <laughs> so these, did you flip like out? <laughs> I just went, no, do you know what? I sort of went, this is a. As Brene Brown would say, this is a teachable moment. Mm. And I thought, what do I do? Do I acquiesce to their their, their desires and make, you know, Indomie yeah. noodles for Peg and, a, yeah. you know, goat's cheese omelette for Leo? And How was your oldest, that little punk? What's his number? 13, nearly 14. No fault. Yeah, well, guess what? Yeah. yeah, that's on you. That's bad parenting. A 14-year-old, he's, you know, he, sh- he shouldn't know the words degustation menu. You know that, don't you? I know. <laughs> I've made a rod for my own back. Yes, you yeah. are correct, but you'll be very proud of me. Do you know what I said? I'd been, I'd worked for 14 hours She's that day. Is that back of spaghetti yeah, bolognese? Yeah, that back? Well, but with kids. all the accoutrements yeah, yeah. as well. I mean, how very dare. Yeah. Anyway, I'd worked for so long and I uh, there was a fork in the road and I could have made them all their own yes. dinners. I ate it and it was tasty as hell. Were you audibly going, mmm, this is delicious? <laughs> yes, I, I was. I was like, I can taste every hour of the 12 hours I slow cooked this bastard. Anyway, I uh, I just said very calmly to all of them, hand on heart, guys, this is a delicious meal and... I am not making anything else. Mm. So you either want this uh, or go to bed, you're not go to bed having, hungry. Go to bed hungry. Yeah. And you're out of the world. Yeah, and um, and they went to bed hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. More family in the studio now. Oh,
Olympia Valance. You may have heard her filling in for Chrissy on this very show. Or Neighbours, Informer 3838, Playing for Keeps, Dancing with the Stars, and just like our very own Chrissy Swan, a Formula One commentator on oh. 10 Sport. Oh, but now well, yeah. you can see her at the Caulfield Cup and get along to the Caulfield Cup this Saturday. Visit mrc.racing.com for tickets. Here's Olympia. I can tell by your face you can't remember the car racing thing. thing. I'm not going to bring it up. Mm. Did it say that I was a commentator? Yeah. Mm. Who put that in? Mount. Get here, Mount. (laughs) Were you there? Were you there at the... At the F1? Yeah. I don't even think I was there. Years ago, potentially. I definitely wasn't a commentator. Oh, you don't have to be a racing mount. expert to be a commentator. Wow. as Chrissy Swan, you. And yeah. That's correct. I want to talk about racing. Uh, great time in this festival. Horse racing, Swan. Yes, yes, horse racing. Get the plug in. No, it's my, you know, my favourite time of year. La, you it were is. there last yeah. time. Jeez, we had fun now at the races. But snap dancer, right? Snap yes. dancer. The mighty yeah. snap dancer. Yeah, that was at Memsies. Memsie, we won the Memsie. You won the Memsie. Uh, first group one of the season. Uh, thanks for asking. Got um, scratched this weekend, though. Yeah. Didn't yeah. How do you know all this? Mm. Because I'm a, you know, I love, love well, my it's ponies. One of, it's one of Australia's greatest race horses. But anyway. Oh, Olympia. So you know, like, racing terms and stuff like that. That's how much you like going to the ca- the carnival. I don't want to be tested on them, no. Okay. But I am, you know, I I watch Channel 7 Racing quite right, well, just, and I like racing.com. Let's just play this tiny bit of audio. Love a little flutter yeah. on a Saturday. One of Brownie's horses, bit of a lad. Uh, <laughs> they're off and racing in the Scotty Stewart Brawley and bit of a lad missed it by seven. Mm, you're a bit of missed a lad. Missed it by seven. You know what that means? Bit of a lad won't. Yeah, yeah, what does it mean? Missed the line by seven horses. <laughs> missed the line by seven horses. Missed the start. Missed the start, of start the by, race. Seven start. by seven lengths. But missed the missed the line by seven mm. horses is much better. Thank you. And I can see why. But seriously, when won. I when I watch the races, they literally speak in a, another language. Yes, absolutely. But and, I, and I do wish that I knew it fluently. Mm. But yeah, that, Caulfield uh, Cup this Saturday. Absolutely. Bit of a lad won't be there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Well, he retired. He's now Damn. he's now an equestrian horse. That's nice. But all the gun horses. Will be there on Saturday, won't they? Absolutely. Beautiful. Will I Jack just... Charles be there? Sorry, Pang. Yeah, yeah, Jackie's yeah. going to be there. Where well, are we going to be hanging out, Jackie? At the Avenue. Up now, oh, this is his time yeah, to shine. No, at have the have Avenue. Fun. At the Avenue. And you can do that champagne tower. Remember on the media preview day, they had all these champagne glasses yes. built up, and Olympia nailed it, pouring the moet all so over I'm, the glasses. I'm in stilettos really? on a on a homemade um, stool that was made specially for this. My legs were shaking, holding a bottle of Moe, trying to, like, fill this tower. Oh, you did and, uh, I know, I know. Can I just say, well too, when, you know, you uh, filling a champagne tower with a bottle of Moe, it's that little common touch that has <laughs> made you a hero to the middle Australia, uh, and that's why you're beloved around the Stop country. I, I wanted to say, too, that I just think that Corf- the Caulfield Cup could not have had uh, and could not have chosen a better ambassador than you, Olympia. Oh, Wow. See? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Emma... doesn't, doesn't seem right, does it? You <laughs> said you said before we went to air to support you and to not say anything bad, and so there you go. And what I else really do you want from me? It. It, yeah, I didn't mean it. And you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick one on the races. Yeah. Tom uh, Bell Chambers, mm. your boyfy. Um, um, husband. 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 What? Husbandy. The married mate. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, as we know, football is often train off Oof. in retirement. Uh, that will not be. How's forgotten. he going with the new suit? Because of course he'll be your uh, he'll be your plus one on Saturday. How's he fitting into his suits at the moment? Okay, that was an off air conversation that we had. Uh, oh. He may have split his pants at um, at the <laughs> Memsies. Split his okay. pants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, to be fair. To be fair, the, the the chairs there were very low. You know oh. that he's six foot eight. Yes. Even for me, sitting down was it was low. And then he sat down, and his you know knees are yes. high yeah. up. You would know you're tall yes. if it's a low seat. Yeah. Anyway, unfortunately, the poor bugger. It was the first five minutes, and he um. Split his pants. That's very <laughs> embarrassing. Split his pants at Caulfield for the whole day. Visit. Yeah, M- but then Jack and I found some safety pins somewhere, and we. Fixed it. Oh, what a We're great to the time. rescue. Yeah. We're going to play a game, but I just want to say visit mrcracing.com uh, for tickets. You can see Jackie and Olympia at the Caulfield And it's Cup. going to be better weather than today. Absolutely. Let's it's not going to be raining. They yeah. really could not have picked a better ambassador than you, Olympia. I love you so much, Sam. He's making, he doesn't <laughs> it mean feels it, wrong, though. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. Chrissy Sam and Brownies out of. Bye. Do you know, do you know how to play this? Out of bye? Mm. Uh, the. Mum and the dad? Yes. Yeah, let's go. Mm. So this is a game that I made up, actually. I'm going to give you a famous foal. Foal? 
and you've got to say who Out its of. parents are. Bye. For their human foals. Gotcha. A foal is a horse. <sighs> I know. <laughs> I'll go first so that she can... <laughs> I'll go first so she can understand. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, am, sure. I doing, am I, I doing know, this? I'm, I'm doing this, aren't I? Sorry. Hey, I'll name the, uh, I'll name the uh, foal. Yeah. yeah. And it's one of you up, okay? Mm-hmm. Who's the mum and who's the dad mm-hmm. in there? And you know how to play this, okay? Yeah. George Gorn. Chrissy. Um, am I buzzing you? Oh, no, anyway, yeah. It will be buzzing. Max Gorn and his lovely... Uh, I have to say it. Out of... What's her name? Jessica. Jessica. Je- 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 Jessica. Je- out of Jessica Gorn by... The great stallion Max Gorn. Oh, there you go. Right, that's how you play. That's, that's how, how you, you play. It. All right. Yeah. Now your name, <laughs> your, bu- your name is your buzzer. Listen, you two. Now your name is your buzzer. Okay, yeah. And now yeah, because we'll just quickly check your buzzer. Swanee. Swan- Swan- Chrissy, go Olympia. Oh, oh I did. Okay. did you okay. just forget okay. your name then? Is everything all right? Go again. Olympia. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. That's, 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 you've got a quick buzzer. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> 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 Albus Severus Potter. Olympia. Olympia. Oh. Out of Ginny Weasley by Harry Potter. Whoa, bang! Yes! That's impressive. Wow. First blood. I you thought like... you were hungover. Hey, listen, I've you... got Harry Potter tattoos. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's, oh, that's not sad at all. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, here we go. Olympia one, Chrissy zero. No, Tal- Chrissy's one. No, that was a that was an example one. All right. Okay. Talula Willis. Chrissy. Out of yes. Demi Moore by. Bruce Willis. Bang. Oh, one She's back. Bang. Demi Moore, of course, the star of Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. I love and the role. She, all those names. The role she played was Madison Lee. Yes. yes. How good's that movie, Olympia? Oh my god, it's so, so good. good. It made me want to watch it in the car before. One yeah. all. All right. Willa Jonas. Willa Jonas. Chrissy. Yes. I don't know her. By. Name. Uh, no, out of Priya. Oh, yeah. No. Wrong brother. Oh, okay. Free Olympia, hit? Free hit. Oh, um, out of... Oh, yeah. The Game of Thrones girl. Yeah, Game of Thrones girl, but I... Yeah. Sophie. She's, she's funny. I love her. Sophie. Sophie's right. Sophie T- Turner. Turner. Sophie Turner. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Which Jonas is it? There's so many. Nick? Joe. Joe. Four. Joe. Nick. Correct. Joe, well Jonas. done. I'll give you that. <laughs> Olympia wins. I would have accepted a former North Melbourne champion, Peter Jonas. <laughs> Thank you. That's just for you. Um, how fun is that game? That's really fun. Yeah. yeah. Felt long. We'll play that when I come over for lunch. I oh, know. You've got to meet me. Yes, um, I know yeah. I right. do. Thanks for coming in. We love you. We love face. you so oh, I love you so MRC much. <laughs> Racing.com for tickets. <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. How do you do? It is going to rain like crazy today. Hey, yeah. so Brownie, <laughs> we just, Duno and I, we kind of thought about all this uh, weather stuff and going, come on, how bad can it be? I mean, yeah. There's a lot of mm. a lot of hyperbole. We know what rain is. Yeah, all right, we've seen, we've seen rain. Who doesn't? I, I love accumulating Nimbus Cloud as much as the next person, right? Mate. But we <laughs> we looked at, the, looked at the radar. Mate, I've never Whoa, seen that in my it. life. Look at that. Oh, if, my if God. If that was if that was a CAT scan, Brownie, you'd be dead. Is that Port Phillip Bay? Are you sure you haven't got hey. on Port no, Phillip Bay? No, that's, that's, I've never seen that before. That's Can I tell you, the radar <laughs> nerds... That's wild. The wild. radar nerds are loving oh, this yeah. weather. I'm obsessed. I'm checking and checking and checking. Once I've got the 256 loop. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the longer loop. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's yeah. been a big show so far. What have you missed? <laughs> Tommy Gleisner, Brownie saying, Boyfi, uh, Olympia, Olympia. <laughs> This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. I want some tropical stuff. Thursday, October the 13th. Mm. Management like to give me, uh, like me to give you a sense of the day. Sure. There's a lot of rain coming. <laughs> All right. That's Not what... a lot of yellow and oh, it... red, though. Brownie's Brand, looking at that radar, and, and but he's trying to be positive, you know. <laughs> yeah. oh, there's not much red or yellow. It's just a lot of blue. Uh, I've lived in Queensland where my house, our house flooded, and there was a lot of red and a lot of black. So we'll get through this. Mate, he's lived in Queensland. Okay. Forget about what everyone, all the all the breakfast television uh, stations are saying, all the weather. Get out there and go have, have a, a barbecue. Go, go have a barbecue, <laughs> an outdoor, go go for a walk, play golf, do yes, whatever you want. It's a light sprinkle. According you to Brownie. You can actually walk in this if you've got the right gear. You Fly a kite. No, k- kites won't work, but you can walk. Yeah. If you've got, yes. if you're lucky enough to have a partner, if you've got a boyfie, 
and you want to just go for a little walk out there today, I reckon today's the day, Sam, Brownie, careful. You? <laughs> he said it, Swanny. He, he yeah. said it. I know lost. he did, but he can also kill you with his bare hands. But in your words, <laughs> as we were going to the song, the, you said, I've lost my mind. Because mm. I've never heard Boyfi in and my life, I've and I've never heard, heard you say it. I think I heard you also say, God Almighty, <laughs> which means that yeah, you've lost control of your mind. That's right. Also, God Almighty. Hey, you know me, though, I'll never bring it up again. It's okay. It's one for my wife, and my wife was listening. Yes. She likes to go for that. There I, you go. I think it's a beautiful, if that's the nickname that Kyle's has for you, I didn't know that, but now that it's in play, that's mm. beautiful. Okay, All the time. I insist on it. You're <laughs> listening to Chrissy, Sam, and Boyfi. <laughs> it's got a nice roll to it. It does it? too, doesn't it? Hey, um, so anyway, there's a lot of rain expected, especially in the north and west of Victoria mm. today. Um, but I think we would know that if, you, if you've been listening or watching any news mm. today. It's a big day today. Mm. Be careful out there. Hey, here's some here's some news that always excites me. Mm. When there's a punch up on a flight, yeah. I'm always in. Yeah, now, like obviously, that. you hope no one was hurt and you hope everything's fine. But you know, it's, mm. a, bit people, exci- it's a bit exciting. People don't generally get very hurt. No, because in the, it's in the mid flight brawls. It's, just, it's no. so hard to really throw them. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, going. Have a lot of space. Exactly. The congestion. A passenger punch up is, for- but it forced this Jetstar flight to turn back to Melbourne on Tuesday mm. night. Footage of the incident. Two men repeatedly punching each other. They're off to Brisbane. I don't know if you know this. Uh, Brownie used to live in Brisbane. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, so write it down. And the Gold Coast. And, 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 and the Gold Coast. And then they said that the aircraft made it to Mansfield. Yeah. And then they turned then they turned it around. Uh, we've got audio from one of the idiots that was fighting. This is them getting taken off the plane. <laughs> Compelling. How did, how did I not? I didn't see that one. I didn't <laughs> well, see that I one. Direction. I was I hoping like how you went with that. I, uh, it was, you'd be stiff though. So both men probably charged, likely to be charged. But one of the guys apparently was, uh, I'm not sure if he's drunk, but he was very aggressive in the lounge before it and then on the plane. I want to so know the story. Someone, someone's decided to stand up to it and go, hey, mate, pull your head in. Yeah. And obviously got in the blue with that. I hope that guy doesn't get charged. Yeah. I know, but you sort of do lay down mm. with dogs. Um, I, I want to know their relationship to each other and what they were really fighting about. Maybe actually. they were boyfies. Yes. Ooh, you so never know, know, do you? Jets at late night flight. Yeah. yeah. It didn't take off till 10 p.m. Stuck in the bar. A couple of extra drinks. Stuck there. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do but drink too much and then punch your mate mm. out on a... There's on nothing a, else to do. I mean, I there's no other way mates. for it. I love us. For me. Former Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has um, he's tweeted out a picture of himself and the recently departed Angela Lansbury because, of course, they were cousins. You knew that, what? didn't you? No, I didn't. I didn't. didn't. Angela Lansbury and, Mal- and Malcolm Turnbull were cousins. And he tweeted wow. out. He you... referred to her as Auntie Angela, posted a photo of them in 2013 when he saw the performance of Driving Miss Daisy that I saw with uh, the great James Earl Jones and Angela mm. Lansbury. That's unreal. That's yeah. unreal. Do you have the family treated? What? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I like to know how uh, they are he's, related. He's like making the, it up. You know, no, he's Malcolm, making it up. Malcolm Turnbull's mother's sister is Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury's boyfi was mm. Turnbull's brother's son. Right, okay. Mm. So they were absolutely cousins. So um, uh, Malcolm Turnbull's uh, mother was Angela oh, Lansbury's uh, sister's cousin's father. <laughs> no, oh, they, you now you are no, making, you it. making it up. Does that not make sense? You made that up. Hey, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has left the door open oh, for a future yes. presidential run. Jesus. What about that? Yeah, what about if The Rock became the... I'm in. I'm in. He, he'd be a big chance, though. Yeah. 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 Well, Absolutely. I've, I've seriously considered it, quotes The Rock. You have to when you start looking at some of these polls and these numbers creep up into the mm. 46, 50% of the country would vote me for me if I'd run, yeah. apparently. Oh, okay. And and exactly. small, the I, dais would look in front of the oh, run. Be <laughs> and he's a smart guy too. Exactly. Uh, I, any any AFL trade talk for us? You got anything? Nothing? Um, Please don't get Brody in to talk about it. You know what? It feels like we should. Brody! Is there any air? Here he comes. He's actually coming. Excellent. Oh, yes. <laughs> now listen, Brody, young man. Just, just, just the highlights, just, just the just big ones, ones, mate, okay? As soon as you start going, venturing into mm. SEN territory, you'll be cut off. So just, what are the highlights? Like, here we go. 
Brody Grundy, has he gone to Melbourne? Yes, we already know that. That was from days ago. All right, so Jago Amira has gone to Frio. Rory Lop has come to the Bulldogs. Josh Dunkley, the much sought-after player who we didn't know whether he was going to the preseason draft or the, or the preseason draft, has gone all the way through to Brisbane, which is... And Eva Asava Radigalia, who wanted to go to Port Adelaide from Geelong, has been denied his request. Sorry, what was his name? Isava Radigalia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Has been denied. Where's he he's gone? Been denied. Oh, denied. Nah, he couldn't get to Port Adelaide. He did want to, um, it was obviously playing with Geelong, but wanted to go to Port Adelaide. Josh Dunkley's obviously gone, as I said. And why are you on Lance time? Wittner, why, what's why he on, doing? Why are you on times one and a half at the moment? No, just, just that's the way he talks. <laughs> is it? Don't get in his way. Stay out of his way. He's in his zone, it's like brother. A call. Stop it. <laughs> And there has been a trading of, I would say, big men that are on the fringe of their teams. Mm. Yeah, so Wiedemann has gone from Melbourne to Essendon. He's probably going to cement himself in that forward line. Uh-huh. Aaron oh, well, Francis well, well. has gone to Sydney. Settle down with what they're, where they're going to play next year. <laughs> just just no, where they tutorials. Yeah, just where they're going. Aaron Francis has gone from Essendon to Sydney and will probably... Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. Yesterday we had Sally Cap in. The Lord Mayor. Uh, or the Honourable Lord Mayor Sally Cap, and uh, she, we're t- chatting about Sam being a potential king of Moomba. Uh-huh. Swanee, you've no, been the Queen no, of Moomba. Hold on. Uh, I've probably spent too much time in Queensland. <laughs> Dino, in he's Queensland, a WA yeah. boy. Yeah. So uh, Sam's the only one in the studio. Sam and I born and crowned. bred Melbourne. Melbourne Absolutely. Yes. Melbourne royalty, I would say. And we asked Sally about this. What does Pang have to do? Yeah. He was born here. Yeah. No, I'd be happy for you to put a, an application of some sort oh, together. Yes. Yeah. Or, or for your friends and colleagues to do the same. Oh, oh, yes. Friends and colleagues to do the same. So I thought last night I just thought... Don't have to be asked twice. Don't have to be asked twice. Just after a nice glass of red, I thought I'm going to pen <laughs> an application for my friend because I know he's such a humble guy. Of course. Such he modesty he has. He would never even pen though, his own application. Even though it's a burning desire of his to be on a float on Birdwood Terrace. <laughs> ah, so <laughs> exactly got me here. You got me. I got you. I know. This is the draft, the final draft. Yes. So I'm going to submit it. Yeah. Now, if you want to change it, talk to me off air. I'll sure. be changing it, This is mate. getting sent off to Sally Cap. <laughs> Pronto. Great. Read there is no way her office is not getting your application and saying, no, nah, I think It's not an official we'll application. I didn't, I'm not well, right. It's not official. you don't have to, Sam. <laughs> Dear Ms. Cap. Here we go. To the Honourable Sally Cap, or LM, as you privately told me to call you. Mm. <laughs> I'm putting forward an application for my esteemed colleague and friend Sam Pang, mm. or SP, as I like to call him, to be the King of Moomba in 2023. It is my belief that Sam would satisfy all the criteria that the Melbourne City Council is looking for in a monarch. <laughs> Sam is not only a Melbourne icon, but a national icon. Yes. Or as Sam likes to refer to himself as, the national brand. No, I don't. Which will undoubtedly, undoubtedly draw interstate travellers. To the event, <laughs> is that right? Ah. They're coming. They're coming in. They're travelling to Mumbai. No, once, oh. once they hear you're on the bill, look <laughs> out! Mate, the tourism the draw card. Of course, he is. The majority of audiences would know him through his various TV appearances, namely Celeb Apprentice, All Star Family Feud, True Story with Hamish and Andy, where he played a baggage handler, and of course, Dino's Footy Show. Yes, brother. Proud. Even though Dino described him as. Undirectable. <laughs> well, I was hardly working with Stanley Kubrick, by the way. Mate, no, you you ruined the set. It doesn't matter. There is nothing. There is also nothing more iconic in our fair city than AFL, and with Sam's valuable contribution as a nuggety small forward with an aversion to pain for the Collingwood Football Club, he would be a fan favourite. Obviously, this would be close to your heart, LM, being a former board member of this great club. Sam truly loves engaging with the masses, especially in his various radio roles over the years on 3CR, Triple R, and most recently, which I have witnessed firsthand, his warm and flowing back and forth conversation with the listeners on Nova 100, mm. Melbourne's funniest breakfast show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Clearly, John. <laughs> Clearly, charity is a big thing for the council, mm. and Sam has shown over the years to be a huge supporter of many charities. A humanitarian. I've uh, done a lot is, of work. Uh, regularly, he has selflessly donated his time, often only for a small fee delivered via envelope. <laughs> and even though sometimes this would exceed the charity's yearly canteen takings, <laughs> Sam would always have their best interests at heart. You're a disgrace. And there was no greater example of this than the 2016 version of Run for the Kids, where Sam decided, <laughs> where Sam decided at late notice 
to sleep in for the kids oh, instead. I got drunk and slept in for the kids. Yeah. Well, what a man. I John. had forgotten mm. that. What a man. God, that was so funny. And that was your way of bringing increased attention to their plot. Thank you. Sleep in for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> you ran it though, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did. Well, so, so on, box on, tick. On my own. Yeah. And then I spent a lot of time with the listeners after it. <laughs> and the kids. The sick kids. Listen, the night got away from me. That's oh, not my fault. I'm sure it that did. Is so uh, funny. Yeah, unbelievable. As we know, there would be challenges with every prospective monarch, <laughs> as evidenced by the choice of Rolf Harris in 1974. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Zig yeah. from Zig and Zag yes. fame in 99. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, the swan giggle combination in 2018. The words oh. Rolf Harris are in this application. <laughs> <laughs> and Zig. <laughs> If you do give the role to Sam, there are just a couple of things for you and the council to consider. First up, you thought you had your work cut out with the size of Peter Hitchener's head, but this crown will need to go up several sizes to fit Sam's giant bonce. You went yes. with bonce. I love it. Hold on. Bonce. Ten yeah. points for the use of the word bonce. Secondly, as is known industry-wide, Sam is not great with kids. Love so, it. So it will be important to choose a queen that is strong in dealing with the Litleys. It goes with uh, Boyfy, Litley's Boyfy. <laughs> and the final issue is a tricky one, but one worth mentioning. Sam never works long weekends, so <laughs> Moomba would need to be moved from a traditional day to accommodating. True. And preferably not a Wednesday, as that's his golf day. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. You've, got, you've brought me around. In summary, LM, I submit to you that my friend, Mr. Sam J. Pang, is an outstanding candidate to be King of Moomba in 2023. Thank you in advance for your consideration, Lord Mayor. And P.S., one last tip. Best to get the parade off early as Sam starts drinking well before <laughs> midday. <laughs> Signed wow. on the bottom of that document and we're away. I wish you were my boy, Pete. No, I really do. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Now, Selma Plum. Wonderful name, wonderful human, in which you just heard a song, The Brown Snake. She has 583,000 monthly listeners on Spotify and also is an ARIA nominee for Best Solo Artist, Best Pop Release and Best Australian Live Act. And you can watch the 2022 ARIA Awards on November 24 on 9 and 9 now. Here's Plum. Welcome, Thelma Plum. Hello. Hi. How are you going? Um, there is so much to talk about. Do we just cover off your connection with Dino first? <laughs> yeah, right. Go on. We can. We used to live in a building in Carlton uh, seven years ago for a few yeah. years. Together or? Uh, I was above Thel yeah. and Ruby. She had a pet rabbit. They used to steal our Wi-Fi for beer. Steal, pay for our Wi-Fi and we beer. We carton and beer. And we had some debaucherous times because we were just one staircase away. <laughs> so you just hear a knock on the door occasionally. I was probably yeah. loaded drunk a I lot mean, of the time. Yeah, <laughs> not me, not uh, me. Mate, it was oh. a beautiful time of not me. our lives. It, it was, was nice. pretty wild. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's very funny. We were just talking about how you used to throw me chocolate down from your window to my balcony. <laughs> it was lovely. It's yeah. so beautiful. Did, did you yes. want that to happen? Or was he just <laughs> yeah, I'm like, clearing the Who pantry? is this guy that keeps throwing <laughs> us treats? Um, no, we did. We definitely wanted that to happen, yep. It was more likely to be the guest that wouldn't leave oh, so that's, at the mm-hmm. end of the night. I feel like it was me. But, <laughs> you know, I'm going to say it was you. We took turns. Um, what was he? What was he like seven years ago? Oh, oh. just his sweetheart, lovely, just right. like he's now. affable. Aff- yes, affable, <laughs> eminently affable. Mm. Now, Thelma, your career has just hit. What do you call it? The nos. The, the nos, nos button. The oh. nos button. Um, you know, it's like turbo crazy. You're everywhere. How are you feeling about it? Um, I feel very. I mean, I feel very grateful. Um, I feel very happy i'm living my best life it's you know it's fun yeah you got a huge crowd at the forum the other night and i was i was like did you go out and get wild after but what did you do after the gig um i did not i went to bed i was really tired we had a show the next day um i would have loved to have you know some chocolate thrown down down, but um i got to say sometimes sleeping after a show is really lovely what time is it what time is the show next day um, the next night, you know, but there's like next night, but there's so much more to it, you know. You got to like catch yeah. a plane, you got to travel, you got to do all of that business. And I'm not, I'm not a good flyer, so um, me flying hungover is a terrible idea, really. Brisbane yes. girl, Brisbane boy, 
You're sort of a Brisbane boy. So, yeah. I've been there 20 years up yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, we love you, so... Mm, thank you, yeah. Thelma. Are you, are you, <laughs> very, Thelma, you were aware of Jonathan Brown playing for the Brisbane Lions and his storied career up there? Did uh, you? I mean, yes, I am aware really? of it, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that question. Yeah, I'll pay you in beer. I'm after pretty. This. I reckon, did you ever? Did you ever see him play? Did you ever see him? Did you um, ever go to a game? I, you know, I can't say that I did, but yes. it was. So um, maybe too young. I mean, thank you. I, I probably am too young. I was probably how not old, born yet. How old are you? Well, you know. You know. How old are you? <laughs> well, I'm old. Well done. What's wrong with I'm you? I'm old. Early twenties. No, yes. Early twenties. Oh no, you missed young. you missed Brownie's <laughs> career by a mile. Especially the glory years. <laughs> The 2022 ARIA Awards uh, are on November 24 on 9 and 9. Now, now these nights must be loose, the ARIA nights. Oh, see, this is... I just feel like I had this idea that, like, the music industry would be like, yeah, we're partying all the time. But i got to say, the ARIA Awards are also um, fairly tame, I think, if you are nominated and, you know, I've been there before. Yeah, you've got to keep it, it nice just you in do. case you have to get up there. Could you... Uh, that My worst nightmare would be, like, accepting... Oh, Accepting an aria, how horrible! <laughs> um, but you know, being yeah, being a bit drunk and who uh, was the person that dropped these ducks? Uh, the great Axel, Axel Nunders. Whitehead. Axel Whitehead. Yes. Oh gosh, I On do. Stage. Yes, I do remember that he mm. was. And he was drunk, Axel, so don't yeah. do that. Yeah, don't do and that. also, that. out of all the awards, the <laughs> aria award, you could really do yourself a mischief with it. Do you know? I've often wondered if I do have one at home or as already, and mm. it is. I've thought. If I ever needed to protect myself, this is, yeah. it's it's wild. It's yes. like, yeah. It's properly sharp. Yes, to get it sent to me, it had to be, um, yeah, we had to be very careful. I like that, uh, I like that Thelma can um, remember uh, Axel, what? Whitehead. Axel, Whitehead. Axel Whitehead dropping his pants, but can't remember a th- single thing you did on the footy field, Brownie. That makes me happy. Well, I, didn't, I didn't drop my pants here. What's the ma- so what about this, though, ways. Thelma? You're so accomplished. There's ARIA Awards, then there's the Melbourne Fashion Week yeah, Ambas- talk about Ambassador. That. What does that involve? Um, so sounds, sounds hard. L- oh, so hard. It's just, yep, been a schlog. But um, look, I it's been very fun. I feel like I've always loved fashion. Um, I've I'm living my like childhood dress up dreams. Yes. Um, and it's just really nice to get to go. Um, I was with um, Sally Cap last night. Oh, we were hanging out. She said she came woman. and yeah. had a chat to you yesterday. She's a good just, woman. She is pretty. You've changed your hair. I have. It looks amazing. <laughs> Thank you very Do much. Do you Chris. love it? Do you like know, recognize yourself in the mirror? Like, who is that glamazon? I have had some humbling moments waking up in the morning and being like, "What? Who's that?" But um, <laughs> yeah, look, I I feel happy. Yeah, I, it's exciting. It's fun. Why it's not? It's a beautiful copper color. It's amazing. I love the the, the, the line here, Thelma. Debuted your copper hair at the launch. You debuted that hair. This is so funny. I had like um, an embargo on my hair before, like a week before with my hair. <laughs> really? so I was like, you better not post this. No, I was. I'm okay. not, I mean, sort of. But was, it yeah. a big dis- <laughs> was it a big decision? Is it like going through house colours? You know, you get those little things you. Yeah, the swatches. The, the, the swatches? Yes. Really? I mean, it was, yeah, it was a big decision, yeah, Mm. because I've also bleached my eyebrows, so, and I know that's going to sound funny, but um, to (laughs) people, they're going to imagine that I, but anyway, but it was, it was a big thing, anyway. And And leaving, leaving the split ends, is that, was that your decision as well? Um, He's lying. Just so you know, everybody, I have no split ends. Son of a bitch. I didn't know that's such a big thing. (laughs) Thel, you're becoming a fashion icon and your music's unbelievable, and uh, watch the Arias, the 2022 Aria Awards, November 24 and 909 now, but go to Spotify. Spotify, type in Thelma Plum and just sit back and let it do its thing. We love you. Thank Lovely you to meet you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Quick tidy up. I uh, spoke about it earlier this morning. Young fella, Jackie Brown, in the uh, division discus titles yesterday at the Athletic Swanee. He made it. He finished top two. Did you hear this, Sam? He's through to the regionals. Yeah. Uh, discus, of course. playing discus. Yes. Yeah, he's throwing the discus. Yeah. Well, so he's, no, so fa- he's, he's not in the falconry anymore. No, he's Jousting. moved on. Moved on Jiu-jitsu from jousting, gone, gone. fencing, pottery, gone. gymnastics, out. pottering out. Uh, unless he throws it on his sisters, uh, but discus—that's his new thing. And oh, he yeah. made, he's through to the regional. He's one yeah. step away from the state championship. Because Come, you know, you there's always you know there's always one kid at little Aths or whatever when you're growing up that's always the fastest. Yeah. Oh yeah. That kid who throws the furthest in discus 
Threw a foul. Threw a foul. And what, you only get one throw? Jack was like one of those soccer players that just kicked the goal and put him into a World Cup final. Yeah. Celebrating, Celebrating at the kids' yeah. demise. Good on Mate, the roar went up. Mate, yeah. Good on he, got, he got uh, reprimanded by the teacher. Jack, <laughs> we don't celebrate others' failures. I hope that t- teacher, I hope Jack just really loaded up on that. Just told that teacher, <laughs> yeah. what for, gave him what for. I'll tell you what he really loaded up, though, just to tidy up quickly, Swanee. Yeah. I, I thought, right, a young fellow, he's finished about 10.30, I'll drop you back at school. Yeah. 15-minute drive back from Doncaster over to the centre of the universe. Sure. I, my ears got bashed in, pummeled Whoa. for 15 minutes, straight back on to, Dad, when's Dino going to get me around for a test drive oh of the new Billy God. Cart for the Billy Cart race? It's time to tell him that oh, it's not Jesus. happening. Jeez, mate, I'm scrambling oh, at the well, moment. It's not not happening. We just we got the money. We just don't have anyone to build it. He said we need to talk. So, <laughs> so mate, you're going to have to come He wanted a meeting, up. didn't he? He wants a meeting. Oh. You're going to have to come up with something, Dino. This big billy card race through the streets of Melbourne started December. He thinks he's the crash ca- crash test dummy for it. If someone can go to our Instagram, uh, DM us if you can build us one. We, we've got a deal for you. We've got cash. But at this point, man, it's... I reckon uh, and we're not Jack talking, could probably build probably it. Probably could. Yeah. We're not talking a rickety old wooden thing. Probably. No. One. We're doing a proper, proper, but what's it, proper billy cart. What's it for? What have I missed there in terms of a, a billy cart? Race? Well, Jackie was initially going to do it with me, do this race with me, but then the T's and C's, ugh, the nerds. Oh, you're in, sorry, you're involved in a billy cart yeah. race in December. Yeah, Red Bull. Man. Ever seen Little Rascals? Come on. What? Anyway, yeah, okay. anyway, uh, Bam Bam was going to come down with me. He's not allowed to legally. Oh, no, he wasn't going to come down. Dino told him that he could be the pilot. Right. And didn't so, look at the fine print. What did the fine print he say? He doesn't forget. No, uh, 18 and over. <laughs> Jackie no, doesn't I'm forget. Just missed out. <laughs> Jackie doesn't forget things. So if you can help us, help us. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll give him some Lego. I'll bribe him. Well, you're going to need to do something, oh, mate. mate. This is because I need to wear earmuffs when I'm around that kid now. Good luck. Well, Chrissy, Sam and Brown, every show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brown, oh, unless it's a weekend. Billy the 100.